So right now, most people use a database. And a database is just a collection of records that are stored. But one problem with a database, you can change what's in it. For example, if I want to change this brown piece of data for a blue piece of data, that's absolutely fine. Well, that's fine, but in some, some industries such as finance, such as tracking um, shipments, for example, where you do not want, where you want a perfect audit trail and you don't want to change data, this is not acceptable. And this is where blockchain comes in. Blockchain, you can add data, and once you add data through cryptography, which is effectively just clever maths, you can secure and lock in, if you like, all previous data in the blockchain. So now you have a perfect audit trail which can never be altered. And this is great, for example, tracking your payments through uh, banks, so you know you have a perfect audit trail. Uh, sending parcels around the world so you have a perfect audit trail of where it's been, who's handled it, and supply chain management as well. So, traditionally now, on this is a standard blockchain. You have data coming into the network, it just appends to the, to the blockchain then. And this happens constantly over time. And as long as the network's running, the actual blockchain, as you see here, just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And this will never stop. So long as the network is in use, this blockchain now will just constantly grow. Now this, now this is a problem, because we've got 200 gigs worth of data now on Bitcoin's blockchain. Every node on the network now needs to store that amount of data. So as you can imagine now a mobile phone, for example, just can't, can't store that amount of data. Now this is Temtem's blockchain. Same source data structure again. Transactions come into the network and it's stored on the blockchain. Again, just comes in and stores. What makes Temtem unique is, a node, each node now can decide on how much of this they store. They can store all the data, or if they only want to store half the data, they can just delete, if you like, the bottom half. Now this data now, has been deleted from this node. This is not like Bitcoin's SPV at all, but this data now is deleted from this node. But, this is a critical thing, it's not ever deleted from the network. Other nodes on the network may have this data, and the data structure in the current data now that is held, because it still holds some of the blocks, headers, can, can, in a way, confirm a transaction without knowing this data here. But, if it wants to get this data from another node, it can ask for this data at a later time, just to confirm a transaction, if it needs to be. But that's now, as you can see, Temptance blockchain, the traditional blockchain. Yeah, so this is the NIST randomness beacon by here, and these are three nodes on the network. Every minute, the NIST beacon sends into the network a 512-bit random number. This random number can never be pre-computed at all, so Nobody knows this number before it's sent out by this. Now, each node only does one single uh, one single calculation. Now, they take this random number and they take it away from the uh, node hash. This is one single calculation to determine the next leader. That leader now will be responsible for confirming all transactions in the next minute. This does one calculation per node. Bitcoin requires to do millions and millions of transactions per second for 10 minutes. That's a lot of energy, a lot of specialized hardware. We use one single calculation. And because now we have determined that this node by here is the leader, everybody now knows this node is confirming a transaction. So if this node comes into the network and says, and just puts out a block and says, this is the leader, because every other node on the network knows that this is the leader for this one minute, they will ignore this node completely from the network and forget about any transactions they've sent. So that can't be now, it's impossible to have a fork in the network. So this load is the only node right now allowed and able to send to confirm transactions. So if this node, for example, sends a transaction directly to us, it will be appended to the blockchain and then sent out to all the other nodes. So, and because they know exactly who's the leader for the next one minute, you can send directly to that node. You don't need to send it via other nodes as is the case with other currencies, because that's very inefficient and pointless. So this now is an authority node. This node knows of each node on the network, and it, every one hour it sends a document to each node. This document by here gives a list of every other node on the network. So every single node on this network right now has a global view 
of the network. So this node knows about the purple and the blue node. Now, when it comes to being a leader, if this blue node is a leader, right now this green node knows the blue node is a leader. And rather than just sending it to the purple node, hopefully get into the blue node eventually, it can just send this transaction directly into the blue node. That bypasses all, all other nodes, it stops them wasting resources, and it makes the network much more efficient. So, this is an NIST beacon as shown earlier. Now this is an external, external source of randomness. It's not our only one, we do have two others as well, in case this one ever fails. And this sends in a random number every, every minute, 512 bit random number. Now the reason we use this is because this source of randomness now is truly random. It uses a quantum source of randomness, it uses lasers and lights to generate this random number because the problem with current current number of generators is you can predict them. Eventually you will be able to predict them. This is completely random and because nobody can ever predict this number means that this random number that comes into the network you have to be on the network and attacking the network at this point in time you can never pre-compute it and the chances of you attacking the network while this is in play is very low.